Uh, good morning. My name is Larry Roshan. And I'm Terry Moe. And this morning we have a presentation here on the uptight pattern and the ceramstone line. Uh, we first presented this to Midwinter earlier this year, and we're reprising it here for those who weren't at Midwinter to get a chance to see it. And we'll continue on with it. And we're also doing it so it can be recorded. And <laughs> you can check the re recording out from the, the Society's library should you wish to see it again. Okay. Eptide ceramostone line were the last patterns that Red Wing made before the potteries closed in 1967. Uh, both designed by Charles Murphy, and they don't have a lot in common, but one thing they do have in common is that their accessory pieces aren't standard dinnerware accessory pieces. They varied from the prior patterns that Red Wing produced. Eptide was introduced in 1965, and it's if you remember from our talks in the past, uh, a line refers to a shape. Uh, all could be many different patterns in a given line. For instance, Concord has 20 patterns in the line. Eptide is both the line and it's the pattern. It's the only pattern in the Eptide line. Um, it's a strange pattern in that it didn't include a pitcher, it didn't have a beverage server, teapot, or salt and pepper shakers. Uh, it's one of my least favorite patterns because I collect pitchers, teapots, and salt and pepper <laughs> shakers. <laughs> so there's nothing in there for me to collect. I've got a dinner plate and I think that's it. But despite missing all those common dinnerware accessories, it did have two different styles of coffee cup, which, you know, make, how can you make sense of that? Um, by this time, we're in the mid-60s now, and Red, Red Wing Potteries is facing you know, great competition from overseas for uh, costs on the, the products they produce. Uh, labor costs are increasing, and as we know, within a couple years after this, the, the potteries close because of a labor strike. Uh, so the managers at the pottery are looking for ways to reduce labor costs, and one way to reduce labor costs is to decrease the, amount of, the number of brush strokes and instead move to a different type of uh, painting, as it were. And you'll see on Ebtide and on subsequent patterns, and actually starting some of the earlier patterns, they go to more of a swirl effect, where it's not really brush strokes, but <coughs> using a swirl effect to be hand painted. Um, the color is a greenish gray glaze uh, on a dark base, and they hand caused a, sw a swirl to ap appear on the piece. And every worker's swirl pattern was different, and it varies. The swirl amount varies a lot, piece to piece, as we'll see here. Here's some of the nicer-looking pieces of uh, Eptide on the cover of their brochure. Uh, again, you see the swirl pattern on the sides of the piece, on the face of the plates and bowls. These are the items that were available in the Eptide shape. And they're kind of in the middle at the top, we see cup with handle and cup without handle. Why you would want a cup without a handle, I do not know. Uh, the three sizes of the plates here, again you see the swirl effect to them, uh, varies a little bit plate to plate. Bowls, the bowl in the middle has a rather deep swirl to it. The bowl on the left has hardly any swirl to it. So, quite a bit of variation. Sugar and creamer. And there are the two uh, coffee cups up close. Um, just kind of a different, I, I guess I've never heard a story as to why they made a handleless cup, but they did. Well, at, at the same time period in the hotel and restaurant where they made a little teacup without a handle. So both of those happened at the same time, essentially. So I don't know. Maybe there was a fad going Could on. Have been. We didn't yeah. have handles Could on you your find cups. Chinese food served with a, a tea in a handleless Yeah, that's true. Hot tea, I guess, they yeah. would serve in a uh, handleless cup in Asian restaurants. Or if you had arthritic fingers, you mm -hmm. can't get your finger into the 
finger hole. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's true. Yeah. Can't get the finger in the finger hole, but I don't know if burnt fingers are any better. Anyway, it's an oddity that's uh, kind of unique to the Ebb Tide pattern, yeah. at least as far as Red Wing dinnerware goes, and, and that hotel restaurant. Yeah. I forgot about that. That hotel restaurant cup is a little teeny one. I mean, it's, it's really small. It's, it's like the Asian restaurant cups. Uh, here in Eptide we have a gravy boat on the left and a casserole, which is sort of like the sugar bowl, just a lot bigger. The platter. Again, minimal swirling on this piece. It's it's really interesting to if you get a bunch of Eptide together, how some pieces have such little little of the swirl effect and others have a lot of it. The bottom of the, sh not the very bottom, but around the sides of the sugar, it's, there's hardly any glazing, it's all swirl. Um, and that's really about all there was to say about Eptide. There wasn't uh, much of it made, it wasn't made very long, and it's a rather difficult pattern to find these days. Yes, yes sir. sir. How, how did the, the colors get swirled? I mean, was it like a sponge, or you said let's brush? brush I, I, I think it's a... You know, it's not brush strokes as you would think of when you paint a flower or when you paint uh, some other design. I'm not sure what they held. I imagine it was some kind of a brush perhaps that they held while it was spinning around or maybe they just kind of took it around the piece and, but instead of adding paint or glaze to the piece, they're removing it. Okay. It's all sprayed with the, the dark color on the bottom is there and then they sprayed it with this tannish gray colored stuff and then they take the, the brush or whatever tool they had and uh, go around it to remove oh. the glaze. So they're not applying it, they're removing it, which is That's one of the different. Okay. That's backward, yeah. So How many? the player didn't have anything, someone just kind of just removed everything. Some, some, had a heavy, <laughs> some had a heavy hand to it, I would yeah. guess, is what else. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Well, I suppose it could also be how long was the piece sitting there before the uh, brush got to it to start moving. So if it started drying too fast, you probably wouldn't be removing as much. All right. Good they question. Probably, yeah, and they probably didn't care at that stage. How, <laughs> how many of you are, are collectors of Eptide? I know Dennis is, Wally. Okay, so we've got several folks in here who, who, have collect, who are collecting. Okay. How about the next group, Ceramistone? Group of people that are collecting in, the, in that particular line. Some of the same people, uh -huh. we expect to see that. Okay. Well, now we're on to the, <coughs> the last line that Red Wing uh, made in their dinnerware line, uh, introduced about a year before the pottery's closed for good. Uh, six patterns, Greenwich stone, hearth, hearthstone beige, hearthstone orange, adobe stone, heather stone, and shorestone blue. And I always get heather stone and hearthstone mixed up. It's, they're too close to each other. I get tongue-tied. Um, as you know, any Red Wing dinner collector knows, you know, Bob White was far and away the most successful pattern, and Red Wing spent the rest of its life trying to create another Bob White, another another pattern or line that would capture the fancy like Bob White did. Um, and they kind of had high hopes for Ceramistone, if this is going to be the break they needed to remain competitive. Um, and as we also know, a labor strike in 1967 cut things short, and so they made quite a bit of ceramistone, considering it was only produced for about a year, but uh, some pieces are harder to find <coughs> than others. Uh, if you look at uh, certain brochures that uh, describe ceramistone as improved stoneware, uh, they they bought a special type of clay that had the impurities, fewer the impurities that give pops and glaze pops and such to the piece. And if you ever try to break a piece, you almost have to work at it. It doesn't chip very easily. It's, uh, it was good stuff. It was good dinnerware. Unfortunately, um, they didn't make it very long. Oh yeah, and it was fired at a very high temperature compared to other dinnerware, which you have to have the right clay to do that. And that's what they used here. Uh, if you look at, I often get asked, you know, can I use my smart set? Can I use my blossom time or whatever older pattern? Uh, can I use a dishwasher? Um, I, 
about all I can say is take your chances, you know, try a couple pieces. Ceramic stone was the only line that Red Wing had in their literature that said it was dishwasher safe. Uh, probably because dishwashers weren't common household appliances until we get into the later 60s. You know, when uh, the concrete patterns and such were produced, houses, they didn't have dishwashers in the house. Your dishwasher was your sink and your kids, <laughs> if you were lucky. <laughs> Of the six patterns, each uh, pattern had its own color scheme. Uh, again, it says, it says here three patterns used dark brown as a primary color along with either orange or beige. Um, it can be real tough to tell if a dark brown piece belongs to hearthstone beige, hearthstone orange, or heatherstone. And the existing reference books really aren't much help because there aren't color photos of these things. This is one of the areas that uh, took me the longest to figure out and learn uh, to, to try and uh, determine what pattern a certain piece would belong to. Um, there are, just as Ebtide was missing a bunch of common dinnerware pieces, Ceramistone adds some rather different pieces that you aren't going to find in other dinnerware patterns. Um, there's two different candle holders, a single candle holder which kind of looks like a Polynesian figure. I think that's what's, I suspect that's what's modeled after. It kind of looks like one. Uh, there's a triple candle holder, which many people refer to as a stylized pig. I'm not sure if that's what it's supposed to be, but it kind of looks like it. Um, uh, a serving dish that looks like a cool scoop. It's got a lobster dish with it, which is different, and it's got canisters. So we'll see some photos of those things coming up here. Now the lobster dish is also found in the uh, hotel restaurant, so you'll find the lobster dish in the in the tan fleck, and you'll also find it in in the white glaze from the uh, hotel or restaurant. So the the item is common; they just use different glazes on it. <coughs> Excuse me. stone was the first of the uh, ceramic stone patterns. Uh, slate green and sand yellow is how the brochure describes the colors. And the interior of the plates and the bowls use the same swirling effect that they used on Ebtide. The rims of flatware and all surfaces of hollowware, meaning the exteriors of pitchers and salt and pepper shakers, pieces like that, it was kind of this dark olive green color. You can tell this one apart from the heather stones and the hearth stones. It's got its own color to it. There's a cover of a brochure. Again, we see that swirling effect in the center of the, the bowls and the plates. Those were the pieces that were available. Now this is a, this brochure, if you look in the lower right, is dated 766. So this is July 1966. They did add a few pieces along the way. They added the lobster dish, for instance, isn't on here. The later brochures for later patterns show that lobster dish. Can holders not there and some uh, other things. Yeah, there's a few pieces <laughs> missing. Yeah. This is when it was first introduced, and they added a few pieces as they went along. And a table full of Greenwich stone, kind of that olive green color. If you look, f if you see it in the shop. Dinner plate. Again, just as we had with that stone, some pieces got a heavy swirl, some pieces got a light swirl. Not much swirl on this one. Got an oval, bit. they had two types of vegetable bowls, an oval bowl and a round bowl. And I think I have my slides mislabeled. The top one's the round one, the bottom one's the oval one. It's hard to tell with that perspective because that oval one is pretty old. Mm -hmm. no. One thing you'll see is each of these ceramic stone patterns, at least on some pieces, have it has its own unique ink stamp on the bottom. You see in the lower right here, uh, it says ceramic stone by Red Wing, Greenwich stone. <laughs> and the other five patterns each have their own stamp too, and we'll see examples of that as we go along. That doesn't help you on the beverage servers and the teapots. That's true. <laughs> it's only on the plates. Uh, there's a beverage server. There's a canister set. There's three different sizes of canisters. Uh, very uh, 
basically small, medium, and large size. Use them as cookie jars, you know, flour and sugar, whatever you wanted to store in them. And it's really the first canisters that uh, Redmond put with the dinnerware sets uh, since the Gypsy Trail days. Some Grinch stone cups. Uh, there's two different uh, sauce bowls. Notice how different they look. They're, they're the same piece, just because of the swirl effect, uh, it looks, they look very different. But they're the same thing. Move on to Hearthstone Beige and Orange. These are two patterns that uh, Red Wing Potteries made for Sears. You could only buy this at Sears. You won't find Hearthstone <coughs> Beige and Orange in any of Red Wing's dealer catalogs because they weren't available to most dealers, only to Sears stores. Um, again, we got the two logos for the two different patterns. Now this brochure is also dated if, on the lower right there, uh, July 1966. So again, we don't see the candle holders, we don't see the lobster dish. Yeah, that's a candle holder. Yeah. Hearthstone beige can be confused with Grinch stones. They both kind of have this kind of olive green effect on things. Um, it's not the same, but it can be a bit trickier to tell apart. Um, they got the same swirl effect, again, as, as Grinch stone. The covers and the interior of the cups are different. Uh, they have this light speckled brown colored covers which is different from any of the other ceramic stone patterns. Um, the hallware, the rims on plates and bowls, the saucer and the six inch plate are, are all dark brown, as we'll see coming up here. This is Hearthstone Beige. As it says at the bottom, available only at Sears retail stores. And you can see the, the center of these plates has, looks a lot like granite stone that we just saw. The rims are different, the rims are dark brown, and that's probably the best clue to tell if you got a hearthstone beige or a granite stone plate, unless it actually says the pattern name on the bottom. That's always helpful. There's a hearthstone beige dinner plate, which doesn't look all that different from a granite stone dinner plate. But again, it's, it's brown instead of that olive green color. Um, a platter and an oval vegetable dish, both the top surface and the bottom. You can see the, the hearthstone beige has got this speckled beige fleck color on the bottom of the pieces, whereas in Greenwich stone, it's kind of this sandy yellow color. That's one difference you can tell between the patterns. Here's a, here's a couple of good examples of covers. Um, if you see the same two, uh, the, the beverage server and the teapot, if they were with an orange cover, it'd be Hearthstone Orange. If it had a dark brown cover that matches the, the pot, you'd have Heatherstone. And that's one thing that's tough to tell apart, is you have to see what cover goes with it. If you had a teapot without a cover, it could go to any of those three patterns. So the cover kind of makes a difference in, uh, in these patterns. You can see it's kind of a, I don't know what color you'd call it. They, they call it a beige color, but it, to me it's more of a, just, just a light brown flecking in it. Now, here's some all brown pieces. There's the, the tiki figure, the uh, single candle holder, uh, some saucers, salt and pepper, and a the, this coal scoop, I call it, looks it's a hand serving dish. They're all dark brown. They could go with either hearthstone, beige, or with heatherstone. So if you've got a brown set of brown salt and pepper shakers, it works for both. Now we move on to hearthstone orange. Um, 
Speckled orange was the primary color for this pattern, although it also used these dark brown accessory pieces. Um, it's kind of a pumpkin color. That's the color of, the, of this stuff. No swirl effect on Hearthstone orange. So now they've, they, this just, the, the glaze is sprayed on. There's no uh, swirling here. So unlike the other ones, it, in this line, instead of dark brown, some of the pieces are all orange, they're not dark brown. And I don't have them all straight. I haven't seen pictures of them all. I haven't actually seen all these pieces. I'm not sure exactly which ones are and aren't, but we'll see some photos coming up. And, the, and again, as, uh, the covers here, pieces with covers are dark brown with orange covers. And here is Hearthstone Orange, the cover of the brochure. Again, available only at Sears. We can see the dark brown uh, beverage server, the dark brown saucer, the dark brown sugar bowl there, but orange uh, in the center. And the, the, the coffee cup there is orange, the creamer is all orange. Those will be brown in, um, in Heatherstone. Here's a plate full of Hearthstone, Hearthstone orange. And the note there says, the single candle holder does not belong here. So in the, in the middle at the back, there's a, the, tic, the tiki figure. It's all dark brown. It should be all orange for this particular pattern. A dark brown one would go with either Hearthstone beige or Heatherstone. Try and keep this all straight. Right and crazy. <laughs> Quite frankly, this is one of the more difficult <coughs> seminars put together because trying to figure all this out was really tough, and I still don't know it all that well. Well, Dari said at the beginning that the uh, reference works don't really help you a whole lot. And probably the best thing to do, if, if unless you have the brochures, <coughs> is uh, to look at the article in the newsletter when we put that together for for this line because there are photographs in, in that article in the newsletter and you can see some of the things here that you can't see in the other, <coughs> in the other materials. So take that with you when you uh, go shopping if you're interested in these patterns and that may, that may help you some anyway. There's a nice photo of a hearthstone, hearthstone orange dinner plate. Again, dark brown rim Orange in the center, no swirl effect. That's what a hearthstone orange uh, single candle holder should look like, not brown, but orange. Uh, it's an interesting figure. I'm not quite sure where <coughs> they came up with this one in relation to the rest of the pattern, but uh, they were making things at this era for Trader's Vix, and I'm not sure if they got the idea from Trader Vic to make a Polynesian figure for their dinnerware line, or who uh, knows where some of these ideas came from, but it's an interesting piece, and not all that common. And the lobster dish is available in that orange color. There's the triple candle holder, the one they call a stylized pig. It kind of looks like a pig, I guess. I've never seen a pig with three big holes on its back, but you know. You turn it upside down, you know. And, and most of them have yeah. eyes. <laughs> There's more Hearthstone orange. Again, the salt and peppers in the lower right are all orange. Brown saucer, but orange cup. <coughs> uh, the bowls, we see the bowls in the upper left there. They have dark brown rims, but orange in the centers. And the, and the creamer and sugar bowl kind of get me how the, the, the bowl is brown, the creamer is orange, and the cover on the bowl is orange. There's a teapot, again, with an orange cover. If that had a that beige cover, cover we saw before, that'd be a hearthstone beige teapot. And if it had an all brown cover, it'd be a heatherstone teapot. Just depends on the cover that goes with it. And a couple of tidbit trays. Um, tidbit trays, for those who don't know, were, were made, usually made by the workers in the pottery sales room. 
they uh, the workers out in the shop would drill a hole through the same way plates. So they'd have this hardware there, and and uh, back in the 80s, you could see the when the workers weren't bu workers at the pottery salesman weren't busy ringing up sales. They'd be putting these things together, putting them out for sale. Adobe stone. <clears throat> It's unique amongst the ceramostone uh, patterns in that it doesn't have a mix of colors. Everything else we've seen so far has been uh, you know, brown and orange or brown and beige. This one's one single color, kind of a solid dark color. You don't see a whole lot of adobe stone because I don't think it's particular, particularly attractive. And, uh, but, but it, because it's only this single gla single color, the glaze tends to show off the design better than some of the other patterns in this line. Kind of gives it a two-tone effect that way. Here's some uh, a photo from the brochure of the Adobe Stone, and as you can see there, the the, the color along the the raised lines on the sides shows up differently here than it does on most of the other ones. stack of adobe stone. And there's a dinner plate. And this, this piece shows off the, the rim, the, the raised figures on the rim very nicely. There's the beverage server and again the single candle holder. There's a casserole at the top and some cups and saucers from Adobe Stone. Handled serving dish, gravy boat, oval, oval vegetable, salt and peppers, and the triple candle holder again. We'll move on to heather stone. <coughs> Two of the six uh, ceramic stone patterns had some hand painting. None of the ones we've seen so far had any hand painting on them. They're either swirls or just sprayed on glaze. Uh, heather stone's got hand painting on a couple of pieces. You can see the decoration on the dinner plate, the salad plate, the platter, and the round vegetable dish. And we'll see those here coming up. Again, the pieces other than the hand painted pieces, they have dark brown uh, colors again on the rims and the sugar bowl, the pitcher and so from are all dark brown, including the covers. And that's what makes them easy to confuse with hearthstone beige and hearthstone orange because they all use this dark brown color. A picture from the brochure that shows the uh, dinner plate along the cup and saucer. There is a couple of platters and the round vegetable dish there in the center that shows the painting that you can get on it, on Heather Stone, while the oval vegetable dish at the bottom is all dark brown. There's a dinner plate. So the pattern's kind of pretty. It, it's, uh, I guess, I, in my own opinion, I wish they'd hand painted more pieces than just these plates and bowls, but it is what it is. And again, a dark, dark brown rim around the edge of it. A rather poor photo of a Heatherstone beverage server. Uh, look, it's all dark brown, and it's got an all, all brown cover. So if you got an all brown cover, that's a Heatherstone piece. Cup and saucer on the right. If that was hearthstone orange, it would have an orange cup with it instead of a brown cup with it. And again, the, the logo on the bottom of, uh, of a dinner plate here says hearthstone. There, Heatherstone. There you go again. That's a butter dish on the left. I don't know who's got sticks of butter that are round, but if you have round butter, that works just great. Uh, round vegetable dish uh, on the right side there, there's a design inside it. 
And the bottom of the pieces that had the hand painting were white, not brown. So that's the bottom of the vegetable dish on the lower right there. And why they chose to make it white instead of dark brown, I do not know. There is a 15-inch platter upper left, and on the upper right, there's the bottom of the platter. Again, white. No ink stamp on this one. It just says Red Wing USA as part of the molding process. Oval vegetable dish, and there's a medium-sized canister in the right. Again, it's got an all dark brown cover on it, so that's a Heatherstone canister, not a Hearthstone beige or orange. The most assembled tidbit trays again. That would be from a dinner plate and a salad plate because it's got the hand painting on it. The bread and butter plates were all dark brown. Casserole. Casserole and a gravy boat look a lot alike. They're about the same shape and they all have that handle off the side with kind of a downturned end to it. Casserole has a cover on it, the gravy boat doesn't. And again, our triple pig candle over there on the lower right. The last pattern uh, of ceramic stone, the Char Stone Blue, 1967. Now, the, the, the two hand painted ones are introduced later than the other patterns, so there's really less of it, I guess, even less than the other ones. You, you don't find too much of it. Char Stone Blue, I think, is a very pretty pattern. I, I like the pattern. Uh, we used a set of it as our everyday dishes. We bought it in the early 80s from the pottery sales room and used it for you know, probably. 15, 20 years or so. It stood up real well, and one of the kids dropped one and broke a plate in half, but other than that, we didn't have chips or anything with this stuff. And you could use it in a dishwasher. We also have a set of Sharkstone Blue that we use on a regular basis, along with the hotel and restaurant. Um, sure. Just like uh, Heatherstone, uh, the decoration for uh, Charleston Blue is only on the dinner plate, the salad plate, the platters, and the round vegetable dish. Kind of a snowflake design uh, against dark blue-green. Kind, of, kind of pretty. And uh, the accessory pieces all had uh, dark dark blue-green. Uh, not, not about the only pattern that didn't have brown, that had blue in it and green instead of uh, the, a brown or off-brown color. And like uh, Heatherstone, the bottoms of the pieces that are hand painted are white, not brown. As we see coming up here, there's a cover of a <coughs> Charleston blue, the snowflake design in the middle there on the hand painted pieces. Now you see the, uh, the brochure looks more full now than the earlier patterns. Now we've got the triple candle holder, we got the single candle holder. Uh, where's that lobster dish? That's supposed to be on here. Oh well. Pig ate it. Pig ate it, okay. But you see they, got, they added more pieces a, a year later. This, this one's dated January 1967 in the lower right. Maybe see that. Well, that's right close to the end. Yeah, about a half. Six After months, seven months, yeah. yep, from, from closing shop. There's a set of Sharpstone Blue on a table. It's tough, it was, I found it tough to get photos of the, the blue, the, the dark blue green color. It's hard to get it to show, it looks almost black, but it's really a, about the same color as the rims of the plates. But it's more of a matte finish, not a glossy finish. There's the big platter with the snowflake in the middle, if that's what it is. <laughs> that's a better representation of the, uh, the blue-green color. The covers are the same color as the pots, so no difference in colors for the accessory pieces, unlike some of the other patterns we saw. There's a ceramic, uh, Charleston blue ink stamp that's on, be on the bottom of a plate. There's a tidbit with a dinner plate and a salad plate on it. And there's a butter dish just ready for your round butter. 
Well, actually, you can get margarine, I think, in, in around about that time, as I remember it anyway. A lot of homemade uh, butter butter was in or made in or around. Sure, yep. In a round mold. Mm -hmm. You got the handled serving dish on the bottom, right? Oval vegetable dish. Uh, that's the blue green color, both top and bottom. There's a tiki figure again. I call it the old lady, but the old lady. Larry and I disagree on that, but okay, it could be an old lady with <laughs> that are Polynesian owl. features. Yeah, it almost looks like an owl too if you get that far <laughs> enough and look at it. I, I have five of them. I call them my choir girls choir. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a good use for them. <laughs> and on the left we have. Cups and saucers, a creamer, a beverage server, and some six inch plates. Notice the six inch plates, the bread and butter plates, are all dark the blue green. There's no hand painting on those. Neither Hearthstone, Heatherstone, or Sharpstone Blue have got uh, hand painting on the six inch plates. And on the right, a round uh, vegetable dish that's got the pattern on it and would have a round, a white bottom. Now that the potteries have closed, we're no longer producing Sharpstone Blue and Adobe Stone and whatnot. Uh, now we're into, but when the potteries closed in 67, they had a lot of greenware left in the place and what to do with it. The workers that remained, which were pretty much management people, would uh, decorate the greenware that remained with whatever glazes they had in the plant. So you find some odd pieces from this era. Go ahead and talk about what you have there, Terry. What I have is a piece of bisque, and this is what they had to work with. And I'll put this up on the table. I don't think we'll pass it around because people aren't sitting just you know, filling all the rows. But take a look at it um, after the seminar. This is what they had, and you see some really weird colors and combinations and things that come out of the factory, uh, things that are not lunch hour pieces, that kind of thing, but they were done uh, at the factory after the, after the plant closed. So it's right here. Go ahead and pick it up. I have three dollars in it. And we can glue <laughs> it together if it breaks, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and of course, ceramic stone wasn't the only pattern being produced when the pottery was closed. They were still making lute song, they were still making bob white, and a bunch of different uh, patterns at the time. So. While you see a lot of post-production ceramic stone stuff, simply because that was the, the big push at the time, uh, you'll find other patterns, pieces from other patterns that also are, uh, were made post-production and don't follow the standard decorating schemes of those patterns. And there's a lot of it that comes out in the tan fleck or brown fleck, whatever you choose to call it. That was a fast thing to do, and uh, they did it. Yep. And I'm sure they, I, I guess I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing almost all of the post-production stuff ended up in the pottery sales room, their second outlet, uh, just to sell direct to the public. I'm sure it wasn't sold to retail stores. Um, besides odd colors, you'll also find ceramic stone pieces that were only partially glazed. We'll see a few examples of that here along the way. For instance, here are some orange pieces that have the, or the base orange color to them, but they don't have the brown rims applied. Uh, if they were glazed orange, as far as the, uh, the factory is concerned, those are ready to sell. We can, you know, they don't need the, the fancy brown rim on them. They just sold them like this. Uh, and actually, you find quite a few of these around, especially the plates. The plates in the upper right without the brown rim, you'll find those quite often. And you'll find on these post-production pieces, instead of saying hearthstone orange or hearthstone beige, you'll find the stamp on the lower right on the backs of these pieces. Uh, that's a stamp that they also use on hotel or restaurant dinnerware. And that's very, that, that was a standard way to mark those pieces. And that's a green or a really dark blue, blue, black, whatever, one or the other are the colors you're gonna find on that stamp. <laughs> Again, there's the, the mark on the back of the piece in the upper right. Um, on the lower left, uh, that's another shade of brown. I'm not sure that's from any ceramic stone 
line. I think that's just a glaze they picked out of. Again, they picked up whatever glaze they found and just started going to work with it. It's probably art pottery glaze, I'm guessing. It's not a ceramostone glaze. But again, they marked the pieces with that upright, ring, upright wing uh, on the bottom of them. The one on the right, that's... I've seen several of these. I don't know where that came from. Those obviously aren't uh, ceramostone colors. The bright green, the dark black color, I mean, it's kind of attractive in a way. I'm guessing there are, again, there are pottery glazes, they're not dinnerware glazes. But I've only seen that color scheme on these small plates. I've not seen it on a dinner plate, I've not seen it on any of the other pieces, just that size plate. So I'm guessing they just had a bunch of small ceramic stone plates they put through the line, sprayed these colors on, and called it good. Now we got about nine minutes left. Do you yeah. want to get into some of this? Well, let's see what questions we've got, Sean. Sure. We're at the end of our slides for this now. Yep. In our presentation back, we had some other slides that we had back last midwinter, which we can go through if we have time. Go ahead, Dennis. You know? I, I struggle all the time with this ceramic stone line regarding accessory pieces. Yes. And that, uh, my confusion is because some of them are brown, the solid colors. Some of them are slate green, and one of the pattern, patterns is the like the drab olive. I'm, I'm confused by it all the time, and I thought the green, green, green red stone was olive green. I, I don't know. Can you clarify it for me? So the, the, olive, the olive green is red stone, yes. The, okay. the olive green, I, that's what they call yeah. Red Wing's name for it was slate green. That's the one I thought was in that pattern only was that. And it is. It's yeah. not in yeah. it's not in Heatherstone or Very Wing. confusing for me. I, mean, I, 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 I struggle all the until time. Until you actually it. see the pieces uh, and compare them or have have them side by side to compare, yes, they're difficult yeah. to tell apart. Um, in it in a, if you're looking at pictures online, I mean the quality of the photo, the color of your monitor can mess things up. It can be really difficult telling them. I pretty much don't buy any of those patterns online because I'm not sure what I'm getting. I see why. Yeah. Um, the dark browns of, uh, again, Heather, Heatherstone, Hearthstone, Orange, and Beige, it's the same brown. And in certain photos, it looks very similar to that uh, slate green or olive green. Of, of granite stone, tough to tell them apart. Um, <clears throat> and again, I, I would always get confused with when I find these dark brown pieces. Uh, unless it's got a cover on it, you're really not sure which which pattern it goes to. The, the cover gives it away, but if it's a piece without a cover, then it could belong to any of them. Yep. Unless it's one of those orange pe one of those pieces that should be orange, not dark brown. <laughs> There's a lot of ifs and ands with that. Any other questions or concerns? Yes. Okay, I'm looking at Cherrystone Blue that has that little uh, snowflake design in the middle. Yep. Okay, have you actually seen a, a bread and butter plate with that design? No, they won't have that. The I bread, think The bread so. and butter plate is all dark. Where do I have? I have a sh Right here, on the left side, those are bread and butter plates from Charleston Blue. Right. At the bottom. I've never seen one of the snowflake design on it. No. Do you have one that have, is? They do have the snowflake design on a salad plate. Correct. Seven and, seven and a half Correct. inch. Correct. The seven and a half inch salad plate and the dinner plate have the snowflake design. Okay. The six inch bread and butter do not have yeah. it. They're all, oh, okay. this all is solid color, uh, blue, gray, blue green okay, color. Okay, that confused me because a couple minutes ago I thought you said, or somewhere, either it was up there, that you could find that pattern. No, nope, never seen that. one. Don't, okay. don't expect I ever will. However, because of the way Red Wing did things, you might find one. Yeah. And uh, that is true. You, you never just, say you never. never know this yeah. stuff. It's unlikely, but always possible. But we can say it was not a standard production piece. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Uh, 
Okay, well, let's just end it there. We'll end it there. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. <laughs>